While Revid was a Sith and a part of the dark side, he truly established himself as one of the greatest Sith in all of history. Both he and Malak would bring destruction upon the Jedi and send them fleeing to Dantooine for an inordinate amount of time. Being among the most successful Sith in history also comes the prestige of containing powerful knowledge and secrets of the dark side. Secrets that are well stored within Revan's holocron. But towards the end of the Old Republic era, Revan's holocron would actually be destroyed by none other than Darth Bane himself, Revan's greatest admirer. But why would Bane do such a thing? And why was it the destruction of Revan's holocron that led to the creation of the Rule of Two? Greetings, curious acolytes of the Force, and welcome back to the Archives. In this holocron, we are going to be diving back into one of our favorite topics, that is the history of the Sith. Here, we will discover the secrets of the Rule of Two, and why Revan was actually the driving force behind its establishment, as well as why his holocron was ultimately destroyed. Revan's holocron would never live to see the Rule of Two, something that Darth Bane saw to personally. Doing this was extremely out of character for Bane, someone who valued Sith knowledge more than almost anything and now freely destroyed such a valuable artifact. At this point in Bane's life, he had just completed his training at the Korriban Academy of Sith Lords. During his training, he had been studying the ancient Sith and had come to the conclusion that something was deeply wrong with the way that Lord Khan, the current leader of the Sith, as well as the rest of the Brotherhood of Darkness were operating the Order. But Bane couldn't quite place his finger on exactly what was wrong. They had abandoned all study of the old Sith Lords despite there being a great dark wisdom found within their knowledge. The modern Sith had abandoned all search for holocrons, believing the Jedi to have taken them all, but Bane was undeterred and defected from the Brotherhood of Darkness, striking out on his own and taking the moniker of Darth yet again, something that he viewed as his personal right. Bane would then hunt down Revan's holocron to the jungle world of Li Han, which contained a temple encased with the dark side itself. What Bane saw in this ancient jungle was any sort of knowledge that could be ascertained and scraped away from the old Sith masters, but did not expect to find Darth Revan's full holocron in the belly of the temple. Shocked, Bane would spend the next several days within the temple studying the holocron and learning at the feet of Revan. Bane learned far more from this single holocron than he ever had in his years spent at the academy on Korriban, and he became wise to the darkness. Revan's teachings ultimately inspired Bane and convinced him even further that Lord Khan was poisoning the Sith with the Brotherhood's tendency to say that all Sith were born equal. And when all was said and done, Bane stood and crushed the holocron within his hand. Now, here is where the confusion sets in. Why did Darth Bane destroy the most valuable artifact he had ever seen? Bane, who was all for conserving these holocrons, as he viewed them as precious, the teachings of the old Sith Masters were the most important thing to Bane. So, why would he have this ultimate piece of knowledge and then decide to destroy it? The destruction of the holocron of Revan came as a matter of two things. One was due to the very teachings of Revan, and the second being the fact that the holocron was useless to Bane after he had learned from it. You see, the way most holocrons work is that the creator will imbue not only their knowledge, but will program their consciousness into the holocron itself, which takes the form of a gatekeeper or a guardian of its secrets. The guardian is a miniature holocram version of the creator, with their knowledge as well as personality. The guardian job is to teach, but also to ensure that whoever is accessing the holocron is worthy of the secret that lay within. This is the tricky part, as since the guardians are programmed with the personality of their creator, there's a possibility that they could become jealous of the one trying to learn, and therefore trick or deceive them. However, luckily for Bane, Revan's guardian deemed him worthy of the knowledge and taught him accordingly. But after the avatar of Revan finished his lesson, the holocron ceased to function entirely, literally rendering itself useless. Unlike most holocrons from both Jedi and Sith, who can all be replayed and learned from again and again, Revan shrewdly programmed this holocron to cease function and do so after a single worthy student learned from it. But what was Revan's goals? And why would he do this? Why would he only impart his wisdoms of the dark side onto one? This would actually play into Revan's lesson and the creation of the Rule of Two. This is what Revan's avatar would tell Bane. By its very nature, the dark side invites rivalry and strife. This is the greatest strength of the Sith. It calls the weak from our order. Yet, this rivalry can also be our greatest weakness. 
The strong must be careful, lest they be overwhelmed by the ambitions of those working beneath them in concert. Any master who instructs more than one apprentice in the ways of the darkness is a fool. In time, the apprentices will unite their strengths and overthrow the master. It is inevitable, axiomatic. This is why each master must only have one student. Revan goes on to tell Bane this. This is all the reason there can only be one Dark Lord. The Sith must be ruled by a single leader, the very embodiment of the strength and power of the dark side. If the leader grows weak, another must rise to seize the mantle, the strong rule, the weak are meant to serve. This is the way it must be. We can now see the basis of Bane's philosophy forming, which is to say that the creation of the rule of two can technically be attributed partially to Revan. Revan would be the architect, and Bane would be the hands to build this grand plan. As soon as this lesson was given, Bane created the philosophy in phrasing it, one master, one apprentice, one to embody power, and the other to crave it. Revan's plan was to impart his wisdom upon a single leader, a single master, and then the holocron would be useless, and Bane was that master. And now, there was nothing left for the holocron to give, and therefore, it must be destroyed. Revan's teachings come full circle with the destruction of his holocron, as now, a new Dark Lord has been named. This is the new way of the Sith, and this is the way of the Rule of Two. Revan was so fiercely intelligent that none of the Jedi could stand against him in the Civil War, and although Darth Revan would eventually turn to the light, Revan lives on in the forms of his deeds and the things that he taught the Sith. Despite the fact that he returned to the light side, the Sith Lords after him still continued to revere him. Some, like Bane, held him in the esteem of the greatest Sith ever, calling his story, quote, complicated. Revan did much service in the light, but he also did much more for the dark. Nearly 2,000 years after his death, his Sith teachings would kickstart the most sinister plot ever conceived and executed by the Sith. It was Revan who was inadvertently responsible for the Jedi Purge. Though that may be a bit of a stretch, it's simply a matter of the domino effect theory, which, ironically, pins the blame of the Galactic Empire squarely on one Darth Revan. But anyway, my friends, this is how the destruction of Revan's holocron inspired the rule of two. For those of you who have not read the Bane series, this comes from the first novel in the trilogy called Path of Destruction. If you all would like to hear more about Bane, Revan, and other Sith at this time, be sure to comment down below. And until next time, my friends and fellow acolytes, may the Force be with you.